I agree. Everyone else should have to adhere to it. Yes. How does that come back? Let's go back into bring it back to the book. Mm -hmm. How does that equate to sharpening yourself? Uh -huh. That's what I was gonna say, Casey. Is, is I mean, you follow the rules right. except when it came to red lobster. That's what you're saying, right? Actually, that, that comes back to the seek first to understand, seek mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. You're making the gimbal nervous. What's gimbal? Up, yeah. guys, his subcontractors that he's assigned to. Yep. And then when he's trying to explain to his superior the issues, his superior's response is, who works for who? Yep. Every problem was, you know, every problem was a nail. Yep. Just bang. Yep. You know? You just go tell him how the cow ate the cabbage and that's it. Yep. What's the problem? Yep. Stand up, be bigger, be louder. So how'd it go with Aaron yesterday? Oh man, that was awesome. Well, I gotta follow up with him, but it's kind of one of those, was it as good for you as it was for me? <laughs> Come on, you made it weird in 13 seconds. What's our biggest problem? And it's everywhere, every trade, every state in the country. Yes, the squeaky wheel gets the foil, but the broken wheel gets replaced. Are you gonna be the guy that comes back? and say, okay, what have you done with this? Or now they're responsible to be like, okay, we've had this conversation. Are we gonna let it die? Yeah. Or are we gonna do something about it? The best way I can serve, like the, the, that I can serve them long-term yeah. is to have, to support the leadership in designing this system. So I wouldn't be doing it. I have experience putting together workforce development programs. Uh, but I would be more a supportive role to the leadership to, to put that into play. And I don't, I don't think it's responsible for me to tell them how to do it. Because if I tell people how to do things and I disappear, that effort dies. It's true, I, mean, I didn't really think about that, but just those bite-sized pieces, if you do this, okay, make sure you do it well. Do this, okay, make sure you do it well. But don't, don't try to eat the whole elephant yes. at one time. Good, good. Two, two. All right. Are you going to kind of moderate, or what are we going to do? Are we just going to ask questions? I'm trying to pull up the questions. Okay. It's giving me the circle of death. Just give me a hot minute, buddy. We're going as fast as technology will allow. I love you, bro. Man. What are you talking about? I'm not paying attention to you. <laughs> <laughs> what? What'd you get on my shirt? Well, what does lean mean to you? Lean to me is about enhancing the quality of life. Of course, when I apply it in my day to day, it enhances the quality of my life. Um, it also opens up space for me to serve others, which is another like life enhancement. Um, and applying lean and service to others for me looks like reducing the burden in poorly designed work so that the work is better suited for the men and women that are doing the work. What lean means to me in a nutshell is respect for people. If uh, people have respect for one another, then you can come to a common ground and you can move forward together. If you disrespect people, their equipment, their thoughts or viewpoints, 
then you're going to be at an impasse or there's going to be conflict and it's just going to be a rough go at the heart of it and that foundation is respect for people you start off with that you can build anything why and how do you implement lean in your work life i'd like to take uh, this one first if i can a couple of methods that our team is able to use and, and we've seen some very uh, rapid growth as far as lean and cooperation and collaboration uh, one we had a book club and we uh, read the lean builder book and we were living the scenarios that were brought forth in the book and we took it segment by segment and applied what we could and really applied those principles where we were at the time and from our team as a general contractor we were able to then share that with the trade partners and after sharing that with the trade partners and then giving them the why we saw a lot of um, aha moments where they would come in and after a year of, of producing what we've produced up to this point uh, we've had trade partners now lead our daily huddles and we've also had just a tremendous amount of collaboration when it comes to our pool planning and our weekly um, our weekly schedule meetings with our trade partners where they are giving their input and it's just a beautiful thing as a superintendent to to take a step back and watch the trade partners be the professionals that they are because we've given them a platform and and you know whether it's the Bosch refine my site software that we're currently using or the lean builder book and those principles that are that are talked about in those in, in that book it, it's just a beautiful thing to to see because i'm i'm living the fruits of those efforts that those men in that software and the people behind that software they are are really allowing us to even do this right now I mean, here I am on a Friday afternoon on a deck with friends and talking about this. If I was the superintendent I was 20 years ago, there's no way. I'd hair on fire, react, react, to react, and quality of life. And I'm just thankful that there's tools out there like the Lean Builder Book plug and also the Boss software. It not only makes my life easier, it makes everyone on the job, their lives easier because um, the, the things that would happen on the field, we, we actually talk about them, we foresee issues before they happen and we, we put a good plan together and then we move forward. So uh, I really, uh, I really uh, am appreciative of what we've been able to do. And it's all because other people have, have put that out there for us to be able to learn and all we have to do is apply and enjoy. I guess for me, like the easiest way to like that I could share if when people ask me, like, do you do it in your personal life? Like, well, yeah, um, is my calendar, right? One of the things lean, there's a whole lot in lean, right? There's like this whole universe of, of tools, methodologies and thinking. Um, and so one of them is like visual management, visual display. And so on my calendar, my outlook calendar, I've got categories, different colors assigned to different categories. And so, for example, uh, some of it is consulting, one-on-ones with clients. That's, a, that, that's a black. And so anytime I have a calendar or a meeting associated with that, it gets the color black. I've got yellow for administrative tasks. I've got blue for workouts. I've got like the pink or violet color for self-care, for journaling and, and this sort of thing. Uh, so when I look at my calendar, I can ease, like at a glance, see where I'm, if I'm out of balance, how far out of balance I am, uh, where I'm focusing my time. Based on the, based on the color, color yep. and the contrast. And... I don't see color, so. Too many meetings. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> um, Wrong podcast. <laughs> was, you got me. You got me on that. I'm like, whoa, is that why you always have the sunglasses on? <laughs> Um, so again, it's a, it's a way to demonstrate to people that I ain't just here talking about the stuff. Yeah, I apply you, it, you right? put it, 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 it part moment. of my life. Um, now as it relates to work, I just recently launched my business. Uh, Armando played, played a part in that, uh, in, from the motivation perspective. Um, and that is the way I intend to serve my clients is 
to understand the problem or problems that they're dealing with and, and apply lean thinking to select the problem to attack. Right, when we're in continuous improvement in PDCA, there is an element of failure that's built into that because you have to experiment. And in experimentation is where we have the deepest learning. When the leadership doesn't understand the value of that experimentation and what that actually feels like, they're not equipped to support the organizational change that they're seeking. And so, again, the clients I'm serving, they want that. Like, okay, cool, so we're going to start there. Um, and then it provides an avenue for tools. And so I'd like to focus on the thinking first all the time, but sometimes you got to go tools first. And, and to, to, to your point earlier, Armando, um, I, I created, you know, I lent my celebrity to Bosch refine my site and, and did the digital unboxing yep. um, of the app. And, and that was exploration for me. But as I was going through it, I'm like, son of a gun, if I had this app, Five years ago, I would have worked about 12 hours a week less mm -hmm. because, and I was working for a trade partner at the time. So this isn't from GC perspective. This is trade partner perspective. What that meant was I was getting about 40 different Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. And then we had a constraint log that project managers were responsible for managing. So I had another 40 spreadsheets. And then we had, so we, I had this ocean of- My brain just melted. Exactly, of spreadsheets that were on the G drive or the U drive or on the desktop or just read only, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And we just fumbled through it. And when I'm going, when I'm doing the digital unboxing, I'm like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> this is what I needed. From everybody, from not everybody. just your team. You got it. But got from it. everybody. Yes. And so that's another element that folks, that's easy to overlook in the lean thinking is the collaboration that is necessary for it to happen and coming up with methods to break through those barriers, those communication barriers that we have and share information and problems specifically instantly is what helps us improve faster. So you used to work with us or with me specifically, you were the PM, I was a superintendent on most of your teams and actually since we're being vulnerable here he actually requested to work with me again uh -oh. so that's i'll compliment myself even though he complimented me earlier yep. so it all evens out but along those lines though eric and i we would schedule we would have a schedule update and it was just he and i and maybe somebody from the office and the other superintendent and it was just us mm -hmm. and I struggled just to get my team hey we gotta update the schedule at least once a week you know because it's where we are at that time and we don't want to get away from it yep. and now I go from that four years ago to we've got a room full of people and online and we're all collaborating and we are dealing with major complex issues and we're all being able to see it all at the same time and all being able to give the input and then we sequence the work and it's just a beautiful thing. And it, it just happened yesterday yeah. and it just keeps on getting better and better. Yeah. It's amazing. And, and if we didn't have that digital platform, you know, we're using Bosch to be able to get from A to B all the way to Z. But if we didn't have that, I, I don't, again, I don't want to even think about that, <laughs> but I, I, I remember how enthusiastic Eric used to be about me saying, hey, we have to, to update this schedule. And thankfully, we've got a better way now. It was always, let's, let's, let's take a snapshot of where we're at at the end of the week and know what we gotta be aiming towards yep. right out of the gate, you know, come next week. Yeah, planning and construction, how dare we? And you know, we've probably all been on big job sites where even that once a week by a GC it was would, would be would be completely missing from the equation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and so it just resulted in, you know, I think that's what led to a lot of chaos. Mm -hmm. 
led to a lot of uh, pointing fingers. Yep. And you know, so I think it's great to hear you know kind of the advances that 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 are taking shape that are happening now with with the subcon with you really have this much subcontractor engagement. We don't even call them that. Though. It's it sounds okay. Well, I'm not trying to be offensive. No, no, right. no I'm just but, saying. But you know, yeah, we're trying to make that a dirty word. <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> you know, coming from the from the subcontractor or trade partner side, uh -huh. it's like this. I don't care what you call me. Uh -huh. I care how you treat me. Sure. So if you call me a trade partner, and treat me like a sub, it don't matter what you call me. Okay. Right. If we have an open, honest relationship, right, and we both understand that we have to win together, uh -huh. now I'm a partner. Oh yeah. Right. Like. I've been called trade partner by many general contractors, and I was not a partner. I was their problem. The way they treated me uh, was like I was their problem. So call me what you want. <laughs> yeah, but just actually treat me like I'm part treat of the Treat me, yes, 100%. Yeah. And as long as that's happening, you know, it just makes sense that things will work better yep. overall. Some of the challenges that... In what are the challenges that you face in building a lean culture? Um, I'll take a stab at it. It's uh, it's something that to certain people, and it seems like it's a small percentage of the construction world, it's intuitive. And it seems like the majority, it's counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. I like to say, go slow to go fast. Yep. And it makes sense because it works. But you hear that and you're like, what does that mean? How can, you, how can you make that work? And so that's why we're doing what we're doing right here. We're, we're talking about our experiences. And like I said, I've got basically a $100 million project and I did not have any fire phone calls or anything like that. Things are going uh, well because we're fleshing out the issues early and it's all through the collaboration and it's not just in one superintendent's mind, but we have that and it's taken, like one of the trade partners said last week in a training that I had, he said, you and I used to butt heads, but now I see it. Yeah. And that light bulb moment happened, but I really don't remember he and I butting heads. Right. I, I remember talking to him, it's like, I know it seems counterintuitive, but we're all gonna work together. We're all gonna play nice in the sandbox and and you're gonna see if you give it a chance. Yep. And he did. But that's what we have to do is, is we all have biases, right? Yes. Or biases or however you wanna say. But if you're not willing to take that risk, like you were talking about earlier, yep. and, and it could fail. And I think people have failed before and, and because it wasn't implemented in the right way. And so it leaves a bad taste in people's mouth and they're like, lean, ugh, get, yep. get me out of here. Can you can you share the story of how you first were with the guy, his car, yes. his shoes, and your response, yes. if you don't mind? No, no, not at all. So, and and that's another thing, right? To your point, we got to meet people where they're at, and sometimes people just aren't ready for the change. And I was there, real early. I was a plumbing foreman, and we had you know one of the project managers come out to the job site in his brand new Lexus. This was like when Lexus was a big thing back in the 90s, right? Right. Um, he had his shiny shoes on and comes to my prize like, Jess, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here, we're gonna do some 5S. And I turn around and looked at him, I said, you know what, you can 5S your behind back to the office. I got work to do, <laughs> right? Like there was no, and so that's the other, the other problem like the with- version <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and to polish it off. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the other problem is, Leaders want the change. They want the improvement rather, right? They want the outcome. <laughs> Give me the baby. But they don't create the space or the conditions for the culture to really take hold. Mm -hmm. They want it now. And so what does that require? That requires vulnerability. That requires a superintendent to say, I've never done this before. This is my first time with y'all. Let's figure this out together. Mm -hmm. It's so on that point of the baby 
and meeting people where they are when those expectations from management say that they want that baby. They want the lean baby or the culture. Mm -hmm. But if you're dealing with people that are not even getting looks from the opposite sex or, or whatever the case may be, they're, on, they're not even on dates. Right. They haven't even looked at each other. How do you expect the baby to be made and then the, the time it takes for the baby to actually be born? Yes. There, there, it's a whole process. It, it, you just can't just, unless you go adopt a baby, but right. you know, which that's fine, but that's where the metaphor ends. It's a, it's a long game, 100%. And now sometimes, a lot of times, it's a good strategy to like never waste a crisis. So like when we're having extreme pain, everybody wants that to change. That may be the appropriate problem to deploy lean to, because the likelihood of it impacting it is very high and it's gonna alleviate the pain for a lot of people. And then you have that magical buy-in thing that everybody's trying to get. But not every problem can be solved with the same tool. And so that, it, like it's wrapped. We go back to the tool problem because, well, we got this problem, well, you, last planner. We got another problem, last planner, last plan. Like that's not the only thing there. It's a part of the whole. It's, it's a tool in the toolbox that's a part of the cultural whole. There's exactly right. And so, like, for me, the ultimate tool to have that can um, help establish that culture and deploy these tools is a coaching style of leadership. Yeah, so it's like, I feel like what I'm hearing, not to try and... No, dissect away. Let's go. Simplify. Yeah. But I just... What I feel like I'm hearing, one, one thing you're saying is like, it's, it's individuals, humans, people's natural resistance to change. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Just to kind of boil it down. That's it. And it's like, you know, if you can figure out how to just overcome that, and then from every project you're getting, in most cases, you're getting a whole new team to deal with. All the time. You got to start all over. And for most of the projects that I know you're on and probably what you were on, and I know what I was you know, exposed to, that changes every 12 months on average. Yes. Well, why? Well, my, my thing is why? If it works well, why change it? Ooh, now we're talking about organizational functionality. Well, I wasn't <laughs> trying to... No, I'm just saying, you know, being real here. I wasn't trying to run the truck in the ditch well, here. And... So explain, explain, explain what you mean. Like, what do you mean? What, what, what was the real why? And when I said, you know, a lot of times your teams change every... Like you, you go from project to project, right? Because wasn't I taken away from a team? Oh no, that's right. You left first. Oh, I didn't mean. To. No, so so remember. You... <laughs> wow, I mean, I, I had I had an opportunity. And I, I know you, and I don't. Want I, you know, I, if you didn't do that, we wouldn't be here. Right. I'm Absolutely. I mean, that, that's a very good, good call. Point. Good call. I, I stayed. I stayed with that organization, in which I have no. I love that organization. You know. Uh, for th almost 13 years, mm -hmm. you know, and when it was, when I had my opportunity to step away, you know, I did so on good terms and it was hard. It was like I was yeah. telling Jesse yeah. to drive up here. It, there was a lot more stronger emotion of like, what am I doing? <laughs> Is this the right thing? <laughs> um, and, and it was, it was, it was difficult to do that. But anyway, I'm, I am really interested in what you mean. So, so we had that team and we, we kind of had an inkling of, of, you know, the, the, the transition, and, and I knew more than most, and I was all for it, and I'm, I still am, and we talked about earlier how I, I was like his main cheerleader as far as, as much as I could do. Um, but that team, you know, we ended up having to bring on other people to continue that job, but that team did really well up until a situation happened on another project, I got taken away from that team, that that void, uh, if I can say that, had to be absorbed by that team because there wasn't anybody to yep. replace me. So I went from a good situation to a dumpster fire. Yep. And then I'm not saying that where I left became a dumpster fire, but it was not cool. Right. Because it just stressed everybody out. It stretched everybody yep. out because there wasn't anybody to, to backfill. So that's not cool. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, you know, this is like the, one of those legacy problems. And so the, we can, 
we've got to adapt or account for the conditions that we're in all the time. And yes, the theory is if we kept the same team together from start to finish, it would be better. That would be amazing. Why don't that's we like, do that? That's like utopia. Right. Now, but, but, but think about the project. Even if the, the general contractor team stays on from beginning to end, it's not the same team. Because mm -hmm. you got different trades coming in and out. Right. There's... Finish. You got concrete, they're out. Yep. Finishes start coming in, they start petering Eventually out. they start pulling off. And, and so... And then, you know, the what I call the major trades, you're phasing in and out. Yes. As the... Depending on where you're at on the project, right? Yes. Rough in, then you kind of go away. Then you come back, you got more rough in, then you, you kind of go it. away. And, and I, I always thought it had to be just a nightmare to try and manage that kind of staffing situation. It is. <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 wait. If you, if you do it in the old school way where everything's funneling through you. Oh, 100%. Agreed. But it's a joy to me right now because you've seen it. You saw how many people we have out there. Yes. And, and it just, it works because we have the system in place. And as long as people see the system, take it for what it is and use it for what they can get out of it as far as their personal productivity and also a teamwork aspect it just works beautifully and it's and it's because those tools are there again the tools are part of the whole yep. but to your point traditionally this job that i'm on right now would probably be three to four months behind and severely over budget and everybody would hate life traditionally Yes. And then, and what would the what would that what's the go forward plan traditionally from that point? Is everybody's just yelling at each other yeah. and pointing fingers and you know, the owner's mad at the G C so then the G C is just mad at everybody else and nobody seems to ever want to really just step in and go, Okay, time out. Nope. Right. You know, nope. that did that in the past You've seen it. Yeah. You've did, lived it. I've lived it. We yeah. we, we all have probably yeah, lived absolutely. it. Absolutely, you know. Oh, yeah. And I guess it sounds like y'all are at least some companies are taking this, they're, they're spending more time, they're yes. actually trying to focus on, okay, how do we change, get away from that approach, and let's do it this way, because it's, yeah, I, I can remember plenty of times of, oof. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it could get real mean, you know, and just yes. nasty. Real nasty, real ugly, all the time. I, I got to work with the GCs that they didn't give a damn, just hurry up, just get it done, just get it done manage from the trailer right. all the way to, you know, there were two or three superintendents that I worked with in my career that we actually had flow on the project and mm -hmm. we didn't hate each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so. And that's a, sp a career spanning 20 years? 25, wow. 25 years. Um, but to to eric's point like it was it was combative i knew once i got to superintendent level i was responsible for five or six projects so i knew project a and project b all right i need to bring my boxing gloves because it's going to be a fight no matter what we were going to fight i knew project c like okay like i'm probably going to say how are you doing anything i can do to help you check with the team the team's going to be happy and then project d and e who knows who's going to show up that day I was responsible, I was the lean champion for the group, but depending on what team you got, there would be a difference in how much lean application or positive culture you were going to experience. To, again, to Eric's point, there are or organizations that are really making an investment in terms of pay, in terms of assigning, taking people offline and putting them in dedicated roles to help expand their lean uh, knowledge, their lean capabilities, and that culture. Uh, and I mean, honestly, the way things are right now, I think that the organizations that are going to be focused on honoring and appreciating their people, they're going to win. A trade partner was, I wouldn't say given a directive in a bad way, but that's the way they took it. Mm -hmm. So I see the text, because I'm on text ring, the trade partner responds back, hey, you just told me yesterday, and now I'm getting threatened, X, Y, Z, you know, dot, dot, dot. I step in and I was like, hey, I didn't think he meant to threaten, you know, no threats, just call me if you need anything. 
um, it got resolved, but that's how quickly things can escalate. Yes. Because, you know, trade partners are human too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it de-escalated, everything worked out, but we live in a society where, you know, tone is read into text. Oh. <laughs> tone is read into emails. Yeah. And intentions are... Man, that's a... That's a big one. That's a great segue into another one of the questions about how, well, into into your personal life, you know, and how you see it. And like, man, I I can't tell you how many times I've, and I, and we have all have our, have our own stories where someone misunderstood us. I might've been upset from something else that was going on. So I'm already geared towards what, you know, and I, and I go and I'm, and you know, I think, I think the more we age and the more the more times we make that mistake yes that eventually we do at least I hope we try yeah to to kind of like a trigger goes off when you see something and you like are thinking like, yeah and it's like okay wait a second breaks. yeah um yeah that's well I I call it the uh, happy gilmore effect you know you're you're emotional <laughs> and you think you're right and then you're like oh wait 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 <laughs> they might have took it to I'm sorry, sorry, baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. It's a good conversation, man. So it, it seems like these, some of the things we're talking about kind of surprise you. You know, I, it's, maybe. Yeah. Um, I guess it's because, yeah, I, you know, the things you're talking about as far as in the past, and like the culture, mm-hmm. you know, and I was, I was on very big projects, yeah. you know, and I worked with very big teams. Yes. I worked with, I, I remember when we started the, the airport project and our team in numbers grew so big, so quick. Mm. And we were bringing in all these different people and we were all expected to just plug and play and run at a high rate and you know and the customer was just as big and involved and we were at a point where we thought we were going to get fired wow yeah um and it was very serious yeah yeah. and and our you know our joint venture brought in an outside consulting firm to help to help us as a team come together as a team and go through some team building exercises um and you know and you can you can only imagine, but I'll bet you're like, yep, I can totally see this. When everybody starts hearing, we got to go to these team building exercises. It's like, are you? Yeah. Take your team. It's, yep. like, it's like the yeah. guy that rolls up and take your five S and <laughs> your shiny back. shoes back to the office. I got work to do. Mm-hmm. I don't get time to put together a bicycle for a kid, and I'm not allowed to use words. Cool. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. And which we did. You know, yeah. um, one of the team building exercises. Were you there when we went through that? Yeah, that's the side of that. Okay. Um, and so. I'm glad I wasn't there, but I mean, that's how bad it had to have been. It was. That you guys had to get professional help. We did. Yeah. We needed, we needed yeah. therapy. Yeah. yeah. Well, and eventually, I, I guess, I guess it worked. Yeah. You know, it had to work in yeah. some capacity. Um. I like how you just laughed. Yeah. Yeah. I I always tried, and I am not perfect. I I always tried to like re- respect people. Yeah. My team members, my client, and obviously you know my superiors. He but, he did it to where it bothered me. He was so good at it. Mm. I mean, at the character that he was able to to portray. I mean that he had. And he exhibited, I was like, man, that dude is good. But man, I, I couldn't see, I mean, you did it so well because you respected even the position when sometimes a person didn't deserve the respect. So you guys have read the Lean Builder book. And, you know, one of the things that we're supposed to talk about is you know, how that has affected your life. Mm-hmm. So I take that as not just your work, but your life. Mm-hmm. I think you talked about, I know you talked about it a little bit ago, talking about in your calendar and the colors and how you're, you're not just applying it to work yep. or, or your client's work. Right. You know, you've, you're, you're like, it's like a, 
it's, it's intertwined. I think one of, one of the two you yep. said that how, on on the books. I mean, it's it's kind of affirmation. Like, yep. I'm really not crazy, and I haven't been crazy or you know for for years no. because I haven't been in the position. <laughs> well, I know the jury's still out, um, but I've been in situations where I'm like, this is not the way we should be doing this. But I wasn't in the position of authority to to make that change. And then whenever I did, it was like whack-a-mole. Stay in your lane. Don't don't bring up any ideas. So for years, I knew there was a better way. And then I read this book, and it's just affirming, like, yes! Like so someone sat down, got inside your brain, and went, yes! Here's everything you've been thinking in outline form. Yep. What do you think? For sure. And you're like, look, I could take this to somebody that needs to read this and, and now i'm not crazy yeah maybe after you read it you'll know that i'm not crazy eh. <laughs> yeah yeah so how about you i mean as far as your well, your life is concerned yeah you know a couple of things the way it, it i mean one felipe and i we did the um the collabo sessions about the book right our per and it was really more revisiting trauma <laughs> so we did an episode for each chapter and I shared it from my trade partner perspective and what his learned lessons were from from a GC perspective. But for me, you know, as I, I in my career, I started coaching general contractors and coaching superintendents on the application of last planner. And the way I learned it was a very militant style and you've got to do everything. Mm. And it kind of like you were saying, it didn't feel right, but that's how I learned it. So that's how I taught it. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know, I started experimenting, like, you know what, this team, they got a lot going on. Let's not even talk about that other stuff. Let's just focus on this. Or yeah. when I came in and usually I was brought as the fixer, mm -hmm. right, brought in in the middle of the project. Like, uh, for real, that's really not a good time to try to start doing this stuff. It's like the worst time. But they, hey, go, go, they need some help. We got 90 days and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, God, okay. So when I'd go and get engaged with these teams that were, like, in the middle of it, they're already drowning. They're under-resourced. They're behind schedule. They're over budget. They don't have any mental space to learn. Well, and the last thing they need is you shanking them with your solutions. They're, 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 they're already completely exhausted. Done. Tapped out. Yep. They, 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 yeah. Why don't you just pile it on some more? Yes. That's like, is absolutely. But isn't that the time, though, where that timeout that you talked about needs to happen? Yes. Like, hey, it's all hit the wall. <laughs> we have a couple hours just to sit and decompress, and let's talk about what's important at this time, and we'll go from there because we're human. It's one of the things from the book is the way it's laid out. One, it's laid out in simple practical terms is it okay it's not it's not a white paper in academic language that's good right it's it's a story of how they did it if it was i wouldn't have read it right yeah and you can see it does a beautiful job of displaying that yes it's a system and if you do it all together there's magic but the different pieces of the system are designed for very specific problems so when I come in the middle of the disaster, what's the biggest problem? Okay, uh, constraint management. Ah, well, you know what? Forget all the rest of the stuff. If we focus on identifying constraints, putting them on the wall so everybody can understand who the owner is, what the action is, when it's due, and we visit that thing on a regular cadence, we'll remove constraints. And if we remove constraints, people will be able to execute their work. If they're able to execute their work, we start getting some flow and then we can learn something. We got brain space to learn other stuff. And so then I could say, well, let's go focus on daily huddles. Mm -hmm. If that makes, if that's the appropriate countermeasure to the problems that we're dealing with. And so reading the book gave me comfort. It's like that affirmation of like, okay, yeah, these are separate pieces and I'm not like the lean police ain't going to come get me because <laughs> I'm not doing all the stuff. We can do pieces of it to a, for the problem, like the biggest problem that we're dealing with. Uh, and and then, so personally, what did that mean? That meant I got invited back to the party. I wasn't shiny boots 
that people were rushing off, mm -hmm. people were saying, hey, Jess, can you come back in two weeks? I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. But because now I was better equipped to provide value and serve them in some manner sure. and, and, and not leave them with the list of improvement ideas, but actually minimize their pain. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it helped ease or maybe calibrate my thinking to what I really felt instead of trying to uh, adhere to this ideology that I received from people that may or may not have actually lived yeah. deploying change on a project. Have you ever dug a ditch? Thank you. <laughs> That's hard work. The How Does Bosch Refine My Site Help Construction Company Get Lean. Mm. For me, and so this is like perfect timing, right? We just had the um, the the webinar with Bosch or Find My Site yesterday. So we had some trade partners, some buddies of mine that I used to work with. They were on there. We did like a skit and, and you know, it was good. It was good content. But the powerful part was Gary. He's uh, now, when I left them, he was a plumbing, he was a plumber. Since then, he's went through the foreman role and now he's a superintendent. Yeah, so he's progressing in his career. And he's like, bro, man, I saw what we were doing up there. And he's like, man, can is there a way for us to like input our constraints? I said, absolutely. He's like, no way. In Bosch Refine My In site. Bosch Refine My Site. I said, he said, like the trades can do that. I said, yeah, if you have the, you know, if you're in the team or in the project, actually, that's what we need you to do. <laughs> this is how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so if I put it in there, who sees it? Everybody. Everybody. And he was like, my, like, oh man, like Jess, how do I get it? I said, bro, y'all are piloting it right now. Hit up homeboy A and homeboy B and they can get you hooked up. Mm -hmm. So you can start, like you could start just using it right now without, you know, being a part of a team or whatever because y'all are testing it out. And so, so to the question, it's, it's that. It's we need to, our industry needs to get over itself. And when I say our industry, I'm talking about the men and women that are in leadership, right? Oh. That have responsibility. You're talking about ego. I am talking about <laughs> ego. That's like, that is like so, can be so hard. Yes. Especially for people in those very high leadership roles. Yes. You know, they, oh. Uh, I think they drive Lexuses and have shiny <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Dude, they got them Stacy out of baby. No, it's and what I mean by that is we all have problems. Yep. Every project has problems. And we spend so much damn time polishing and shining the problem. That's wasted energy. Whereas if we design systems or utilize things like Bosch Refine My Site, where we could surface problems, it would be a totally different experience. Because when we surface problems, guess what? We're pretty good at solving them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring it out of the dark into the light. This is what it is. That's biblical. <laughs> yes. True. And it, it, it's not an accusation. It's not blame. It's a fact. Yeah. No emotion. It's, the it's, it's the truth. I mean, it, <laughs> do something about the damn thing. It's, it's amazing. So how many times you get to an end of a project and you were like, man, I would have wished I would have known about this. Well, this tool can help you get there faster. Not that it's going to solve the problem, mm -hmm. but you have the conversations. Yes. And then you're sitting there like, man, I gla I'm sure glad that I have time to respond to this yes. because I'm doing this way early. Yes. Because I can't put this caulking up against this roofing because yes. then I'll have an issue. Yeah. I have time to respond. And yeah. we're not opening the building in two weeks. Right. Bad news early is good news. Oh yeah, you know what is it? Other saying we used to have the, you know, bad news isn't like wine; it doesn't get better with time. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's I think the biggest challenge, and I think when it comes down to relationships, even with general contractors and um, our owners or our clients, is changing that dynamic. Yes. Where I am not concerned about showing my cards. I want to be like, here's all my problems because it's not 
just my problems. Our it's problems. our problems. Yes. So how are problems. yes? Can can you can you can you fit inside this plan? Or if not, tell me what I got to do to change it. Yep. You know, somewhere in the middle. So it could become <laughs> our plan, and yeah. and you yeah. know we had training a, a couple of weeks ago um, about an introduction to last planner, but it was just really an introduction to the lean way of thinking. Yep. And we had owner participation, uh, end user participation, yep. everybody, because we are, oh, I'm going to say it. We are better together. There you go, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I don't even like saying the V word. The vulnerability? Yeah, I don't. The hard part is the editing. Yes. This was gold. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't even know what I'm doing, so. No, you did You did pretty good for not knowing what you're doing there, bro. Test, test one, test two, test. Are you on blue? I'm on blue. Are you on blue? You're on blue. Eric, can I get you to say something? Say something. All right, here we go. I was like, we don't have enough time in this, the rest of this meeting to talk about it with the proper attention it deserves. I was like, let's go have lunch and talk about it while we eat. And that's the way we did it. And the next thing I know, now I've got a superintendent in Oklahoma with multiple scrum boards, stabilizing a team, and going to the next level. And it happened with pool. It happened yeah. with just creating some enthusiasm, curiosity. And yes. All right, so this is a wrap up to uh, the Lean Weekend. It's Sunday morning. Just really wanted to show our appreciation for, for Bosch for allowing the platform, uh, helping us uh, along the way and giving us the, the ability to, uh, to spend time together. A couple weeks ago, I heard someone say that where your focus is, your passion will follow. And I've found that to be true. I've also found out through this weekend and, and over the past couple weeks and just thinking about the subject of focus, looking at myself, my focus is spread out. What my challenge is to myself and to whoever might be looking at this is Focus on what your focus truly is. Pause and reflect. If you don't take time to stop down and assess, you could be just going through the motions and being busy for the sake of being busy. This weekend has been great for sharpening the saw, very therapeutic for me. And it just goes to show that if we as people have other people's best interest in mind, things can go very well. There's beauty in so much. I just heard a, a fish just flop in the river back there. Bird singing. You know, why wouldn't somebody want to stop down to be able to enjoy such a situation? And maybe you feel like you're not in a position to be able to enjoy nature. Maybe you feel like you're overwhelmed and you have no choice but to remain busy. I just encourage you to stop down and focus on what your main focuses are. And sometimes that means cleaning the, the, the plate off, clearing the deck. You clear the deck and keep the main things the main things and all the little granular items will, will fall into place. And Eric, hey, thanks for opening up your cabin, uh, one of your many properties that you have. If you have an interest in booking a cabin or booking a beach house or, or an Airbnb, uh, to be able to get away and to pause and reflect and focus on the important things in life and enjoy nature in one way or another, uh, please check out the link down below. He'd be more than happy to open up one of his homes for you. Times are getting rough out there. Times are rough out there, uh, but hold on. Have hope, keep the big picture in mind. What else should I say? Have a good day.